mic on? Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Cool. Um, thank you all for coming down today. Um, I just want to thank Lucy and Laura um, just for organising this event. And um, there's also Angela Drysdale, who is my course director. Um, so she's really had a hand in, in my career from, from the beginning, basically. Um, yeah, I've got quite a deep voice, so if at any point you don't understand what I'm saying, just put your hand up and I'll just, you know, just repeat it. Um, so as um, was said previously, I graduated from London College of Fashion, um, but the thing is university was a really tough time in, in my life um, because I moved out when I was 18 and, you know, I was constantly broke and I felt I was going through a constant power struggle with some of my lecturers. Um, and, you know, that's quite a common thing that students have. Um, and then I got to the point in my second year where I wanted to, to drop out. So I spoke to my mum, and I'm, I'm African. So there was no way I could say to my mum that, oh, I'm going to drop out of university, especially having um, um, done fashion. Because in African culture, you're either a lawyer, a doctor, or, or both. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> There's really high expectations. So my parents were supremely unimpressed when I told them I wanted to do fashion. But I just, I, I knew that, um, I knew the goals that I wanted to set for myself and there was no one that could tell me anything different. So ultimately I decided to stick it out to the bitter end. Um, I graduated in 2003, um, no sorry, 2006. And um, from this, from the second year I set up my, my own business. Um, and the workload was a lot, um, but for me I wanted to make sure that I had um, a job set up from the minute I graduated because there's so many people that graduate from a degree and they, they feel quite lost and they're job searching and job searching and they haven't put enough preparation into finding work um, to fill in that gap from graduation to start starting a job. So I just thought, let me get a head start and build up my reputation from year two. Admittedly, this was a risky move because obviously I've got uni university work which I have to at least pass and then I have to try and put time aside to get, to get the business going. So it's not something that I'd advise everyone to do. Um, yeah, but if you feel you've got the heart to do it, then by all means, go ahead. Now, I grew up in a household where my mum was actually a dressmaker. So you'd have thought that she would be proud to have a son making dresses, and it, it just wasn't the case. So um, after I, I got her to teach me how to sew, uh, I actually started making clothes for friends. And this is how I got into the business, where they would come to me at about 6 o'clock on a Friday evening, and maybe by about 10, 11, they would leave to go raving in a garment that I'd made for them. Now, the garments were really badly made, but the way I saw it is that they were getting a bespoke one-off garment, and then I would be able to build up my experience on the sewing machine and sewing under pressure, uh, which has been great experience when I've done work for Kanye West or Alexander McQueen, because it's... It's really tight deadlines, and if you, know, if you can't do, do the work, they'll get someone else to do it. So within a year of graduating, fortunately for me, I, I got a contract with ASOS. Um, I did, I think the first order we got was about 300 units, and that was, um, I think in my career, one of the most memorable times, even though I've achieved a lot more. For me at that point, I felt like I'd made it, because I was, I was 22, um, ASOS wanted me, and I've, I've probably got a little bit cocky, but. Um, I thought I'd earned the right to do so because I'd worked very hard, um, so I was able to enjoy that moment. This may come as, as, as a surprise, but I think personally that setting up a fashion company is really easy to do. Um, for me, what the, the difficulty comes in where you have to keep it going. This whole thing with longevity, um, being in the business for five or ten years, that takes an, an incredible amount of stamina. I feel it's very easy to create a buzz as a fashion brand, um, but the thing is, as a designer, if you're going to be approaching buyers, they want to look for a brand that has, I mean, they might spot you in, in your first season, but they won't put an order in with you until maybe your third or fourth, because they want to see that you've got the um, stamina to keep your business going, and they want to see that you're financially viable, and they're not going to invest £10,000 in you if you can't invest £5,000 in yourself, basically. Can I get a show of hands? How many of you guys want to be designers here? OK, so at least, at least a third of you. Uh, are you guys aware that the fashion industry cannot accommodate 
all those people that are applying for it. Um, you know, we, we're in a very elitist business here. Um, I mean, do you guys have a plan B if you, if you can't be a designer? Okay, what's the, what's the plan B? Feel free to shout out. Photography, okay, anything else? Okay, that's great. An agent, okay, brilliant. You, now you're gonna laugh at this, but my plan B was to be a farmer. Um, and there's, there's a good reason for this. Uh, my parents own land in Sierra Leone. So the idea was that I would um, use that land to grow crops and sell it to Sainsbury's and Tesco's and whatnot. Because um, I, I, I really love fashion. Um, but I also love business as well. And the skills that I've learned in business, they can be transferred to any other industry. And that's how you keep yourself fresh, being able to reinvent your skills. Um, and also not being too consumed that if, if you don't work, if it doesn't work in one area, that you can start up in another um, quite easily. So I hope that was useful. Um, yeah, I just want to just touch upon this point of dis discrimination in, in fashion, because you know we live in a society where there's um, a lot of racial issues going on at the moment, and they are really important. But one thing that I've taught myself not to do is use my race as an excuse for not achieving anything. Um, so for example, uh, Wolf and Badger, who are one of my stockers at the moment, who are in Mayfair and Notting Hill, and before I did business with Topshop, they said no to me twice. Um, now, I could have, um, with the first no, I could have said, oh, these guys are racist, or it's because I'm a dude, or even if you're a woman, or if you're gay, none of those things matter. And the minute you use those reasons as an excuse for why you haven't succeeded, that you failed already. Um, when someone says no to you, just use it as, as a tool to think, how can I approach this differently? How can I reinvent what I'm doing? Um, because had I not done that, then on the third time, they wouldn't have said yes. Um, so yeah, you have to be really hard-headed and just judge um, whether, whether, whether or not you're fighting a losing battle. Now, the last thing I want to touch upon is quite a, um, quite a difficult time in my life. About seven, eight years ago, I actually went into business with a good friend of mine. We've known each other since we were the age of 11. And there's this rule that you should never go into business with friends. Um, so what happened with me is my business partner, he got himself arrested. And because we were both directors of the company, I got arrested. Uh, so what he was doing, he was selling drugs. And um, when you get arrested for drugs, you, um, the, the, the CPS, they uh, look for anything financially related to, to the charge. So because we were both making money together, they assumed that we were both selling drugs together. So essentially, I did about four months on remand um, in Wandsworth Prison, um, whilst being investigated, while, when eventually I got released, because there was absolutely no evidence that supported that I was a drug dealer or that I was money laundering or anything like that. And um, he did about three years. Now, that is just a lesson to show you, be careful who you go into business with. Um, even if you want to go into business with friends, do, do your checks. Um, make sure you conduct yourself properly, and also make sure anything that you're doing is with integrity. Um, and, and that was maybe a, a mistake that I made um, that got me in that, into that position. I mean, even though I came, for, came, came out of that situation unscathed, it was, um, I, I eventually lost the business that we'd set up, which was in Topshop at the time. We were selling via ASOS. We were in Alders. Um, I'd just come back from New York to do Fashion Week. So we were at the pinnacle of um, a startup career, and I was probably two, three years, two or three years out of uni at the, at the time. So I decided to shut the business down and then start again, um, knowing that this time around I'd do things better with my eyes more open. Um, yeah, and I think that's it for me. Uh, thanks so much for listening. I um, hope I haven't bored you to death, and. Um, yeah, feel free to ask any questions afterwards. Thanks.